You are listening to Two Friends, Two Poems, the podcast where friends read poems to each other just to see what happens. My name is Tom, and with me always is my good buddy, Paul. And we are here again today to read some poems, are we not? That's why we're here, yeah. I mean, we block out this time, and it's sacred. It's, it's, it's poetry time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Bring the bards. Oh, my God. Four episodes. Um, for me, that's a podcast record. As a podcast creator, the magic number four, I've never made it this far. I'm so excited. And uh, I don't want to, uh, I mean, I don't want to jinx anything, but we're up to 15 downloads, my friend. 15? That's two digits. Wow. And, you know, we're, we're two, uh, two white guys making a podcast. And yeah. we have yet to say anything, in my opinion, that will uh, hurt our future political aspirations. Well, I'm not wearing pants right now. Uh, but what shouldn't have said it? See, I, yeah. I oh. we were go- we were doing so oh. well, weren't we? Well, there is still the editing. Uh, as as I watched the you know as I watched the numbers rise today, I just got dollar signs in my eyes and. Uh, and wouldn't you know it, the sponsorships, you know, once the audience comes, the sponsorships come right after. They do. And yeah. uh, I'm proud to say I, 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 I brought a sponsor today, if that's all right. I was approached by this online store. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're going to give us an offer code, a, a discount code. And I went and I looked at everything. Just amazing stuff that I just couldn't believe could be mine. And uh, the name of the store is notforyou.com, a collection where you can go and buy things that are, it's, it's, an, it's amazing how they do it. They have an algorithm that uh, they create the store. It's a personalized store that's just for you based on, you know, your digital life so it only shows you products that are just out of reach <laughs> not for you dot com our second sponsor it's an exciting day that is exciting Man, I'm, I'm having biscuits tonight <laughs> I'm having two who is your guest poet for the day all right, my guest poet is actually Colorado's Poet Laureate. Awesome. Uh, their name is Andrea Gibson. Instead of depression, try calling it hibernation. Imagine the darkness is a cave in which you will be nurtured by doing absolutely nothing. Hibernating animals don't even dream. It's okay if you can't imagine spring. Sleep through the alarm of the world. Name your hopelessness a quiet hollow, a place you go to heal, a den you dug, sweetheart, instead of a grave. Oh, my God. Thank you. (laughs) That is so great. Were you familiar? Uh, to say that, who's the poet again, please? Andrea Gibson. Were you familiar with Andrea Gibson's work? How, to, how, how did you find the poem? I had heard that uh, Colorado has a poet laureate. We, we had stopped <laughs> for a long time. Is that right? And then uh, started it back up. Uh, Do you know I, the story? Do you know the story behind that at all? I don't. I just started looking for uh, looking at their poems and was like, "Whoa, this is uh, this is very Emily Dickinson to me." Yeah, I've I've been talking with friends lately about reframing depression, reframing memories, reframing our experiences that nag at us as just data points. As opposed to just, as opposed to, you know, placing a value on it, positive, negative. And that's, and that, that reminded me of that poem reminded me of that, which has been very helpful. 
mm-hmm. that a day, a day that from the outside looking in might look depressed, <laughs> could just be necessary hibernation. Absolutely. Um, and Margaret Atwood actually, in one of her books, uh, the year of the flood, they, there's a, there's a commune in there that, um, some of, some of the people aren't doing any work and they just call it that they're lying fallow. Today I wrote a poem to the Xfinity chat bot to express my rage, <laughs> but I, that's not the poem I'll be reading. Is, are you going to read that? Well, I guess I have to now. It's a two poem day for me. Poem for the chat bot. Yeah. This isn't a poem. I just, so I, I went through like two AI chat bots. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then I, and then I finally got a person and I said, can you offer anything beyond tightening cables and restarting the modem? <laughs> can you explain why my service drops every day? Be honest. Tell me why your product is so bad. Please be human. Mm. And they said, sure, I will check that for you. (laughs) I'm not sure. A win for AI there. Yeah, I'm not sure which part. (laughs) Okay. Um, My poem... Uh, and, and once again, I got my poem at the East Atlanta branch of the Fulton County Public Library. Um, and I love what I found. This is a collection by a poet named Billy Collins. And I've been reading it all day. The collection is called Nine Horses. Mm. And this is a poem called The Country. I wondered about you when you told me never to leave a box of wooden strike anywhere matches lying around the house because the mice might get into them and start a fire. But your face was absolutely straight when you twisted the lid down on the round tin where the matches, you said, are always stowed. Who could sleep that night? Who could whisk away the thought of one unlikely mouse padding along a cold water pipe? behind the floral wallpaper gripping a single wooden match between the needles of his teeth. Who could not see him rounding a corner, the blue tip scratching against a rough-hewn beam, the sudden flare, and the creature for one bright shining moment suddenly thrust ahead of his time, now a fire starter, now a torchbearer in a forgotten ritual, little brown druid illuminating some ancient night. Who could fail to notice? lit up in the blazing insulation, the tiny looks of wonderment on the faces of his fellow mice, one-time inhabitants of what once was your house in the country. Amazing. What a twisted little Stuart Little. Yeah, isn't that fun? Twisted Stuart Little. (laughs) Twisted little Stuart Little. A little pyro Stuart Little. Sounds that don't get recorded. A large breath before a long phrase. One of three taut wires out of phase. The warm up. That's better than the take. We hear the notes that aren't played. The mic's not set up and neither is the tape. Things will get fixed in post anyway, but not these and not today. The sounds that don't get recorded. Footfalls on the tile floor sliding weather seal of the door all after the toothpaste lid dropped 
The tongue glides between the upper teeth and the lip. The shampoo got shaken out, lathered, rinsed, and dried. Polish brushed on the nails. Sounds that don't get recorded. Laying flat outside on the ground, the plane's lights far above. Caterpillar's jaws tearing a leaf. Pulling the knife out of its sheath. A fish bolts and disturbs the water's flow. It's the aftermath of a collision of two planets long ago. The closing of the eyelids, the slowing of the blood, the stilling of the breath. A wish for good omens or strange, even sorted. All the sounds that don't get recorded. Awesome. Beautiful. All righty. Well, my turn then. It's your turn, yeah. This is a poem that I wrote just the other night, and it is called night chips for the sake of this poem let's say you did get the chips or the crisps as they say over there let's say for the sake of this poem you got up from the couch and put on shorts and shoes walked to the chevron what's better for the poem with or without the phone can you face the 15 minutes of no media, nothing coming in except bug sounds and street lights and cars driven by people going to buy their chips? Can you face the silent summation of calories and nickels and dimes in existence time and they're just chips as you debate how far is too far to turn back? Hmm. Or is there music in earbuds to fight the silence to compete with tired in the name of hungry, a montage of no fucks to give? For the rules of this story. Sleep is what you need. You know it. But chips. For poem's sake, let's say chips wait. <laughs> I compromised and got popcorn. <laughs> 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 spoiler alert he got the chips <laughs> yeah not not the sleep <laughs> no, yeah, I mean eventually <laughs> you've been listening to two friends two poems the podcast where friends read poems to each other today we heard poetry by Colorado's poet laureate Andrea Gibson as well as Billy Collins and original work by your hosts Tom and Paul. If you enjoy the show, give it a like and be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts as new episodes will continue to drop. Thanks for listening. Go write a poem. That's okay as well. You can sit there all day long and ring the bell. And we'll all eat together inspired by the breeze. Sing a song of gratitude